Are you serious? The water's turning red. The water's turning red like blood again. This is the ninth time in less than two years, in about a year and a half, in 18 months, that we have seen major waterways, river, lake, seas, rain, and now oceanfront property in Australia this time just outside of, uh, right there in Sydney, Australia, Bondi Beach and Cloverly Beach have been closed because the water has turned blood red. Now, this is just breaking news. I'm here in the hotel, so I got the iPad, but I have no way to show you it because I don't have another computer to, to link it. But if you go to the Daily Telegraph, you can actually see the uh, pictures, I've seen about four or five pictures so far. It's, uh, it's incredible. Now, they're saying that the red algae, they're saying algae is what's caused it. Maybe so, maybe not. doesn't matter to me. Here's what the Bible says. In Ezekiel 32, verse 6, And I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains, and the rivers shall be full of thee. And when I... So listen, when I, he says here again, Ezekiel 32, 6, And I will also water with thy blood the land where thou swimmest, even to the mountains, and the rivers shall be full of thee. Now we also know it talks about the water turning blood red in Revelation 8 and Revelation 16 as signs of apocalyptic events. We are living in the last days, and if, let me just off the cuff, because I don't have my notes, but I remember it was in late July 2011 when the Texas Blood Lake turned blood red. I did a YouTube video on it, and it was covered by the entire world of national media that a preacher from Indiana says this could be the sign of the apocalypse. And they poke fun at me. And you can watch the video now. I still got it on my YouTube channel. Um, it's got like 100,000 views or something. They made fun of me. They laughed, but I noticed they go very quiet now because since that event, well, the river basin in Memphis, Tennessee turned blood red. The Lebanon River in downtown Beirut, Lebanon ran blood red for three days. The Sea of Azov along the coast of Russia and Ukraine turned blood red. It rained blood red rain in India. And then the waters in France turned blood red and right in front of the eyes of tourists. And then it rained blood red rain, this time Sri Lanka, just about a month ago. And now, oh, and don't forget the Yangtze River, the third largest river in the world, right in the very heart of China, turned blood red, shocking millions of residents. And now for the ninth time in 18 months, the water's turning red. Where? The beaches, the beautiful beaches of Australia are flowing blood red. Are you saved? Are you really understood? Can I have a cup of coffee on this one just, just for a second, just to grab my breath? I mean, really, I, I'm not going to rant and rave and jump up and down. I'm just going to be brutally honest with you. The Bible says the water's going to turn blood red and it's turning blood red. Are you saved? Please give your life to Jesus Christ. You know, I, I'm, I'm shocked sometimes at how these biblical signs can keep happening and nobody wants to admit that we're living in the apocalyptic age. Nobody wants to see it because nobody wants to see it. They don't, they, they're, they're blind to the fact. Oh, yes, the water's turning blood red in nine different major waterways and nine different major places of the world. And the dollar's dead. The economy's crashing in America. The euro is worthless. And there's wars and rumors of wars. The Arab Spring, that was, that was good, right, Paul? No, it was evil. It was, it's evil because look who took over all these countries, the Muslim Brotherhood. And they all hate Israel. Oh, speaking of Israel, there's rockets flying back and forth from Israel into Gaza. 
and Gaza into Israel. And Mohammed Mursi has taken almost dictatorship of Egypt. And the, all they can do is dig up dead bodies of old terrorists like Yasser Arafat. What are you trying to prove? Yet we bury the young men who've died in the battlefield in Iraq and Afghanistan and nobody even knows their name. And what about Benghazi? What about Benghazi? What a cover-up. What a mess. What's the real story? Folks, I'm serious. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We are running out of time. I won't even talk about the social issues in America, the outright immorality, the abortion, the gay rights. I don't even want to talk about it. And then Jamie Foxx calling Barack Obama Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then there's earthquakes in divers places like Japan. Massive earthquake back on 3-11-11. And do we even want to talk about Hurricane Sandy? Give your life to Jesus Christ. You say, Paul, how do I do that? How do I get saved? And I won't even discuss the Hosea prophecy. There's people so sick and tired of hearing about the dead birds falling out of the sky by the thousands or the fish washed up on the banks by the millions or the dead cattle by the thousand or the buffalo or the bison or the... They say, Paul, just go away with your Hosea prophecy. We don't want to hear it no more. Well, what do you want me to do about it? God keeps doing it. He's trying to get our attention. Every one of these plagues and signs of apocalypse keep happening. They don't go away. And can I give you some breaking news? They won't go away. And the grace of God is here right now. And we've seen 1,283 salvations this year alone. Most of them here on YouTube or on our live show. And can I ask you tonight, will you join me tonight? My show will be from 7 to 9 p.m. A special Tuesday edition, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at PaulBegleyProphecy.com. That's www.PaulBegleyProphecy.com. If you want to know more about Benghazi, go to my wife's blog. That's HeidiBegley.Blogspot.com. I'll put the link below and get a feel for what's really happening. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We're running out of time. God bless you. God bless you, please. It's safe.